Uh, all right. Well, obviously excited about Monday. Um, I think the two exhibition games, the close scrimmage and the UTEP game, uh, certainly prepared us um, more than in the past. I love that change. You know, obviously you had the close scrimmage before. I thought the UTEP game was very, very valuable. And uh, now we turn the page to Nichols. They've got two all-conference players. They're um, – you know, like any non-conference games, it's a unique style of play. Smaller guys, um, matchup-wise, always a challenge. Uh, but fired up, obviously, for uh, it to kick off. You've talked about exhibitions, scrimmages are one thing with minutes, and then we see how the players react once they learn their minutes aren't there or they're not going to play as much. Is that something you tell them ahead of time? Do some of the deeper bench guys know, or do they find out Monday when you don't put them in? Um, good question. I mean, I'm, I would assume they would have an idea. Uh, I mix up um, teams a lot in practice to try to just give a different look, but also to try them not to think that way. Um, but they'll see on Monday, you know, I mean, and again, it's um, as I told them, I, I broke up the team. We have 16 guys. Um, and I grabbed like 10 of them and put them in a group. And then I grabbed the other six and I said, you 10 are probably going to play might be less. And I didn't specify who the 10 were and you six over there are not going to play. doesn't mean we don't love you. doesn't mean we're not invested in you, but uh, that's the challenge of being a good coach. You sit about uh, being a coach. You guys have got to be ready. The six has got to be ready. You can't be, um, you, you don't have to be happy with your playing time, but you got to be professional about uh, the approach and you just got to continue to get better, you know? So I think they probably have an understanding, but I try not to ask questions that I don't want to know the answers to. And that, that would be one that I don't want to know the answer to. Uh, True talked the other night, and you talked a little bit about True. Um, I wanted to kind of follow up. When when you watched game film, um, when you, I guess, had more time to evaluate his his game against UTEP and, and the close scrimmage, is what we saw on Monday night what you expected the next step to be for True, a little more aggressively it looked like offensively? Um, and can he play beyond that 12 to 13 minute, which is what about what his cap was last year? Yeah, he'll play more than last year for sure. Um my goal for him is to be in the conversation of defensive player of the year in the league. I think he's got the ability to do that. Obviously, making three threes was great. Um, I don't think True is a bad shooter, but you know, just making shots is, is very important, um, especially at that two or three spot. You know, we our guards have got to make shots, so um, that was a welcome addition. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think uh, his role is going to increase for sure. Um, he brings dynamic defensively, energy-wise deflections. Um, he should really, really buy into that because he could be a lead at that. Um, Coach, can you just talk about this matchup, what you see out of Nichols? Yeah, I mean, like I said, two all-conference players. They um, they will play some matchup zone. They'll play some man-to-man. -man. You know, you don't have a lot of film early in the season. Um, you know, so it's a little bit of unknown for everybody. Um, you know, so you got to stick to your principles um, as best you can. So um, it's not going to be an easy game. I think it's similar in a lot of ways to a UTEP um, where they're aggressive, they're athletic, they're fast, they attack the basket. Uh, so it's going to be a really good challenge. For sure. And um, other than obviously you want to get the win, but what else are you looking out of this game? Are you hoping to get a certain amount of minutes out of a guy, a certain amount of deflections, rebounds? What else are you really looking out of this? Uh, I mean, the minutes thing, that depends on the, you know, how the game goes. Um, deflections, we always try to get 30 plus. Um, we chart that. Uh, you know, I think you look at the UTEP game and obviously alarming to turn the ball over 25 times, rebound the ball very, very well, uh, have to make more threes. I think we made five and one was Donovan at the end of the shot clock and three were true. Um but our effort was good, but the execution's got to be a little bit better. Um, but, yeah, more than anything, all hands on deck to see if we can figure out a way to get a win. You, you mentioned the guys that might play and might, the guys that might sit, but given the schedule, look, you, some years you can kind of ease into things by playing some lesser teams, but you have UCLA, you have St. John's right off the bat. Does that change your philosophy in, in terms of like maybe pushing the depth chart along a little faster than you typically would like to? Uh there's definitely a heightened sense of urgency. Um, 
not to overlook Nichols by any means, but you, you play UCLA a week from today. Um, you know, you're you're playing two top twenty five teams in your first four games. So uh, I, I don't, you know, I'll play whoever is ready, and and um, you know, depending on what the game is. I mean, I do think we have depth, but you never have as much depth I think as you think you do. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think everybody's got to be ready, you know, and uh, especially with those type of games where they're going to, you know, UCLA and St. John's are going to press every single possession. They are um, nothing's going to come easy to anybody, and uh, that'll be good for us. We'll go ahead and put you on the spot for something you probably don't even know much about yet. But Grand Canyon's reports are that they're joining. How much now that the season is here, are you going to be, you know, keeping an ear at least a little bit to uh, what's going on with some of that stuff? Yeah, I just got a text like right before I walked down um, that that was going to happen. I think it's great. Um, you lost a lot of really good basketball programs with this realignment nonsense. Um and I think it's very, very important that the Mountain West um, understands not where their bread is butter, because football obviously bread is butter, but football's obviously had some really good teams and so on. But this has been a really good basketball conference. And uh, geographically, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, obviously, the easy trip. Uh, they are really invested, probably invested a lot more than people realize. Um, so that's a very, very good addition. And I hope we continue to look at some other good basketball additions as well. Uh, one other quick non kind of Monday game question. I'm just curious if you regret in any way the, the Yankees losing and your role in that by not, <laughs> by not staying I helped for game five. Win. Yeah, I you weren't there win. for game five. You know, that was, uh, that was quite a bummer. I was uh, – thinking of all the ways to watch we have a hall of honor thing tonight and i'm like well i'm gonna have to have the phone out where they're five nothing i was like well how am i gonna watch the game and uh man one bad inning and one really really bad inning but it was uh it was a lot of fun i mean to be able to do that's a long trip hard to do but it worked out with the days off got to see my dad got to see uh, a little bit of st john's actually practice where all the players are looking over at me like why is he in this gym um but it was fun it was great it was great to be with the family a little bit and see the yankees No, no, no. They're, they're, uh, what you see is what you get with him, you know, and it hasn't changed a whole lot. And why would you change? So Nelly, uh, his comfortability going into this season, as opposed to last year, he seems poised to have a very successful season. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I certainly hope so. Um, not arriving October 25th is very beneficial to him, obviously, uh, because of the visa stuff last year, but very, very productive summer. Very, very productive fall. Um, I have high expectations for him. I really do. And I want him to have those high expectations. You know, I mean, we all complain about the transfer portal world and the NIL world. But if there's a positive, they should be as motivated as ever. Um, because you're essentially on these one-year contracts. And all of them are. And uh, obviously, Nelly's eligibility will be up. But, you know, we want you to go make real, real money playing this game. And uh, in order to do that, you've got so many good opportunities this year. And uh, take advantage of it, and I think you will. Um, kind of along those lines, how do you feel with Nelly's off the floor, your depth in the front court, Tiki? Like, how are you feeling when he's not on the floor, able to get rebounds and stuff? Yeah, I mean, the Tiki plays really, really hard. Um, high motor. Um, get some offensive rebounds. Um you know, so he's, he doesn't have a lot of game experience, but, you know, he's older for sure. Um, you know, and then obviously that may be a bit lacking with JT leaving so late. Um, you know, Sacco can play the five in a pinch. I think Jovan could, but he's young. Um, but we'll have to figure it out. Mustafa did it last year a little bit as well. Um, so dealing with all the same things everybody else deals with. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, it's really good. Makes things makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Sacco, we saw him shoot some threes in practice. He took a three in the game the other night. Is that the role that you see him as if he's going to play a four or five? You know, I mean, do I think he's a great shooter? Probably not. Um, but he needs to be able to make it, you know. So if you're not going to shoot it, it just hurts the whole flow of the offense. So I've encouraged him. And he made some last year at Georgia Tech. I think he can make them. Um 
So, yeah, I mean, if he's open like he was last game, he needs to shoot it. Uh, is that his role? No, probably not. But, um, you know, he's good around the basket. He's a good, ba- uh, he's a good passer. Um, he's pretty relentless on the glass. But, yeah, if he's open, he's got to shoot it. Microphone back one more time. Uh, Philip, you, you mentioned him only taking two shots in 20 minutes the other day. And what was it like right after the next day and maybe in practice? Did he did you see more assertion out of him? Yeah, he, he, I think he was a little nervous, honestly. Um, hasn't played a lot, you know, didn't play a lot at Arizona and really wants it badly, works his butt off. Uh, sometimes people like Philip who are perfectionists can be a little hard on themselves. And, um, you know, so I think he'll really settle in well. Um, but that's why you play those exhibition games. But, yeah, like I told him at halftime, like you can't play this many minutes and not shoot the ball. Um, so he, 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 he understood it. He's very easy to coach. I know it's only, we only had one game, but we've seen. And Mustafa obviously had missed some threes. He had a slow start last year. Is it one of those things just keeping his confidence up? Or are you feeling confident? Is he feeling confident? Yeah, I think so. I mean, he's dealt with it. You know, there's one game, right? Um, but I didn't think any of them were really bad shots. He got fouled on uh, one or two of them as well. So um, he's mature enough. Like um, CJ, another one, like we were talking about it yesterday, like, They've dealt with it. You know, they'll, they'll know how to get themselves out of it, and I'll give them confidence as long as they deserve it, you know? As Jared said, very small sample size. Are you concerned at all about where you're going to get points once you go to the bench? When who goes to the bench? When when you go to the bench, are you concerned? Um, I mean, small sample size. We, we've got a lot of new guys on the bench for sure. Um, so – but like everybody else, you know. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I'm concerned with a lot of things when you have this many new guys and this tough of a schedule early. Um, but we can't have the drop off that we had last game when I subbed. Now I, I'm not going to sub like that in a real game. Um, so you know, normally I'll do one guy and kind of keep the core and then get that other guy out. You know, so um, there's kind of a more of a method to the madness than what I did versus UTEP. But it's an exhibition game preseason layup here for you but like season ticket sales are going to surpass last year biggest probably since before covid kind of heading back in the right direction do you feel any kind of buzz about the the fan base like excited after last year or is it more the same um yeah i think there's a buzz for sure um there's always a buzz around here when basketball season starts i mean i've loved the um the fan support has grown as the program has grown. Um, you know, obviously winning will do that. <clears throat> we have a, I really do believe one of the best fan bases out there. We're now top 25 in attendance. Um, you know, and I think people, I think they, they enjoy coming to the pit, right? This community loves coming to the pit and being a part of it. And we're, we do our very best to appreciate that we've lost way too many games in here with some good crowds um, that we got to take better advantage of. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it, when you win, I, I think people turn out and, you know, we've had two really good years, um, you know, 22 wins and 26 wins, and we got to keep that momentum going. The other night world series game, I have to ask you, whose Jersey are you wearing? Mickey First Mantle. Mickey Mantle. It's actually a funny story. So when, um, I was going to land. I, I texted my dad. I'm like, where am I, am I going? Am I going to the city? Am I going to your house? Where am I going? He goes, come to St. John's. And I'm, he goes, I'm practicing. I'm like, all right, am I going to make me sit in the hallway or can I watch part, whatever? But then he's like, oh, yeah, and I'll bring your jersey. I'm like, I didn't agree to wear a jersey as an adult. But he has legitimately like five different jerseys that he has those tickets. He bought them, season tickets. And uh, credit to him, man, like 72 years old. He loves going. Um, I know at 72, I'll be watching that thing on a lazy boy. Um, but yes, it was his jersey. He provided it to me. And second, every time they show a left-handed batter from the Dodgers dugout, you're the two of you are on TV. How many how many messages did you oh, get during the game? A lot. And uh, I put my, my cocktail down. I made sure I was patient with that. Uh, only for righties would I start sipping it. But yeah, no, I got a lot of texts. Um, me, my dad, and Spike Lee. It was uh, a lot of high fives going on. But it was... It was um, yeah, you can't uh, lie about your whereabouts when you're on TV like that, but it was a lot of fun. 